Good evening and welcome to Unity Church of Ames. I am Reverend Hill Davis, the minister here, and it is my delight to welcome you all to Unity's World Day of Prayer. Our theme this year is Pray of Your Life, Pray of the World. And so that is what we're going to do tonight. I'd like to begin with an invocation. And it's an invocation written by one of our co-founders, Charles Fillmore. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge your presence and power, O blessed Spirit, and your divine wisdom now transform my human limitations and from your pure substance of love bring into manifestation my world according to your perfect law. Amen. Prayer is a very special celebration in unity, and this year our theme is Pray of Your Life, Pray of the World. And the invocation is As I pray, I connect my highest thoughts with my deepest faith. And Steve is not here tonight, he is under the weather, so Clark is going to read our daily word for World Day Prayer today. Because as soon as I pray tonight, I'm leaving to go to my class on interfaith relations. 
so that I can do it better and better all the time while I am here with you in Ames. Let us pray. Holy Presence, we come before you this night. We become aware of you this night in your many names, in your many expressions. We pray not for ourselves so much this night, but for all of creation, for the little worms, for the microbes, for the lions, the tigers, for the trees, for the rivers, the streams, for the yeast in our bread and the air that we breathe. We pray not to better ourselves, not out of greed, not tonight out of desperation, but out of hope, out of thanksgiving that in so many ways, in so many languages and cultures and eras and times, you have shown us again and again the power of prayer be it out loud in our hearts, through dance, through drums, and through song. And so we pray this night that we will vibrate from our feet and through our crowns, vibrate such that our prayers may resonate in those who pass by this street tonight, those that we encounter again in the morning, that our prayers will resonate with great healing, with justice, with truth, and with redeeming power that brings not just mercy, but deep reconciliation. We pray this this night in your many names, but especially in the name we cry out in our souls, in the darkness of night, in the dawn of the morning. We pray. Amen. Thank you. So good to have you here. We are, um, also we have a prayer flag. If you saw that when you came in, if you didn't have a chance to make one of those, we have two ropes strung from our sign to the trees, and they are uh, filled with prayer intentions. And so if you did not have a chance to do that, afterwards it's out in the um, book nook, and you can do that and leave a prayer. And we'll hold that with you. Now, when you sing, you pray twice. So we're going to sing when I pray.
the Ames Jewish community. Welcome, Ron. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> this prayer follows the uh, Shema, which is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And this is a verse my people all like. Um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your being. The path to the love of God is through the love of others. I do not love God until I love my neighbor as myself. Jewish faith unites mind and heart, even as my mind seeks to understand life's meaning so that my life show, life show love for all created things. We do not teach our children by words alone. May I make my life and actions into good teachings for my conduct I must exemplify Torah. Let my home glow with the beauty of our heritage. Let my doors be open wide to the wisdom and to righteousness. Each mitzvah, that's a commandment, each mitzvah is a way to holiness. The mitzvah elevate our humanity. Let me learn to use them and magnify the divine in myself and in the world. Um, with Shalom, we tend to begin and end our service, so I wanted to include Shalom, uh, which means peace. Grant us peace, your most precious gift and help our people, Israel, be a messenger of peace to all the nations of the world. Bless our country, and that I live in peace, and, pe and bring peace and happiness into the world. Blessed is God, the source of, source of peace. And now we'll honor the Buddhist tradition, and Heather will read a poem written by Bhante Wamala, and she will tell you a little bit about him. I had the opportunity to meet him. Um, he was uh, the keynote person at Unity Lyceum in 2011. So we'll light a candle for Buddhism. <coughs> also had the opportunity to meet him when we were in Lincoln, and the thing that strikes you so much about him is his true humility. And it is said of him that he's a compassionate spiritual teacher and a tireless humanitarian with projects and friends all over the world, in the U.S., in Canada, in Europe, in Africa. And he has received many awards for his peace efforts, one of them being the Global Peace Award in 2007 from the Peace Center in the United States, and also the Ambassador of Peace Award by the Universal Peace Federation. So it is truly an honor to read his book called Inner Space. Gentle rays of the rising sun touch the core of one's being with a refreshing sense of freedom. One enters into a brilliant inner space. Mind illuminates. The heart opens. The spirit opens. The spirit of goodness observes. Meaning of life altered. The stream of life flows through a silent valley. And we are privileged that we have among us a songwriter, and Clark put this to music. So we will be singing Fonte's poem, Inner, Inner Space, and Clark composed the music, Unity Singers.
beautiful piece of music. Mm. We're going to do that again. And now, Herman Kent McCusick from the Unitarian Church joins us from the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Ames. Universalists have a broad understanding and experience of prayer, like many people. Many claim to not pray at all. But in these various understandings, I'd like to share a few that you might experience wherever you visit a Unitarian Universalist congregation. Roger Cowan is a humanist who starts every day in prayer. He says, I need quiet time. I need to express my gratitude. I need humility. I pray because alone I am not enough, and also I am too much. I express gratitude for the gift of aliveness. I assert my oneness with you and all humankind and all creation. When I pray, I acknowledge that God is not me. Reverend Daniel Budd understands prayer as the opening of the human heart. For some, prayer is stillness and silence. For others, it is an active practice as Lucy Hitchcock says, service, especially the prophetic, artistic, dogged work of systemic change for economic justice, is my prayerful response to all I have been given. When I act for justice, when I act with compassion, the spirit in me is no longer trapped in my fingertips. It can move and shake and shape and sing. James Ford, a UU Buddhist minister, writes, I've found through ordinary attention I can know enough to find authentic peace and joy. River Call by Manish Nishir Mazeti is a call to people of many faiths and of no faith to come together in prayer and worship, and his words seem especially appropriate today. Between rocking the boat and sitting down, between stirring things up and peaceably going along, we find ourselves here in community. Each called from many different journeys, many different life paths onto this River Road. Some are here because the rocking of the boat has been too much. Too much tumult. Too much uncertainty. Too much pain. Some are here with questions about where the boat is going. How best to steer it. Where the journey ends. Others are here as lovers of the journey, lovers of life itself. Here, in front, beside, behind, each a passenger, each a captain, doing the best we can. Rest here in your boat, the river calls. Listen to how I flow, the sound of life coursing all around you. Let the current hold you. Let the current guide you. The river that gently flows through your soul whispers, Come, let us worship. 
and in this moment of coming together and of coming together in worship, I offer a more formal prayer written by the Reverend Rosemary Gray McNatt, the first African-American woman to serve as president of Star King School for the Ministry, the seminary, the UU seminary, there are only two in the country that I attended. And before moving into this position, Rosemary served as minister at Fourth Unitarian in New York City and was one of the lead trauma ministers on September 11th, 14 years ago tomorrow. I invite you to prayer. Dear ones, in this time of challenge, I offer this prayer of comfort and challenge. Gracious Spirit of all our lives, God of many names and many voices and one abundant love. At this time of holy unrest, give us the peace that comes when we know why we struggle and what we struggle for. Spirit of life in all its fullness, renew us. Remind us that we who have answered your call were never promised ease or wealth or appreciation. Help us to remember that honor and praise are yours, not ours. Remind us that we serve the great cause of justice, not ourselves. Give us, we pray, a true joy in the community we form each time we gather to pray, to march, to interrupt ordinary time, to create sacred time, a time to help others awaken to what is so very wrong in our world. Help us to be kind, even to those with whom we struggle, Help us to be in the raising of our voices and the marching of our feet, agents of a radical love that holds us all. Finally, help us to be grateful. Grateful to live in these times when great works of justice await our hearts and hands and minds and spirits. Prepare us so that we might do all that is in our power to change the world, so that the whole creation might see beloved community, not tomorrow, but today. We ask these things in the name of all that is holy. What I'm going to share with you is a chant that is sung as a Dances of Universal Peace, and it's Bismillah, Irakman, Irahim. We begin in the name of Allah. And when we're finished chanting, we're going to go into a time of meditation, and it's the way of attunement. So let allow that chant to take you into your heart space. All the different prayers are about opening our hearts. 
So let us do that in this next chant and in the meditation. And please join me when you feel comfortable.
the universe is God's work. God made it very good. God made it to bring forth good. God made it to move, to grow, to unfold and expand. When you move through the universe, the universe moves with you and through you and for you. There is nothing you cannot do or be because all the forces of the universe, all the expanding energies of life, are focused in you and pour through you to come into expression. And so it is. And so we let it be. Amen. And now, we'll recognize the Hindu tradition. The Unity Singers are going to sing Gandhi's Prayer for Peace, after which we will say it together. I will light the last candle for the Hindu tradition.
it is, I offer you peace, I offer you love, I offer you friendship. I see your beauty, I hear your needs, I feel your feelings. My wisdom flows from a higher source. I salute, I salute that source in you. Let us work together for unity and peace. Namaste. We form a closing peace circle. So if you would like to do that, it's a tradition here of unity.